you ready for a totally unique VBS adventure? You've never seen anything like this. Welcome to a place where kids will build, explore, and discover that they were made by the ultimate creator, God. This is Maker Fun Factory. Today's kids are so creative. This VBS shows kids what a unique and wonderful creation they are. Everything's so hands-on, even the decorations. We got to make the snacks and even invent our own games. That was so much fun. This totally helps kids discover that they were intentionally created, that God has a really big plan for their life. I like seeing the kids that were inventors. It's great to see kids' imaginations running wild. I've never been to anything like this before. It's amazing to think of the change this is going to have on kids as they go back to their daily lives. They'll live differently, knowing that God created them and has a purpose for their life. I can't wait to come back again. to a neighbor and say, wow, that looks awesome. Can we turn on some house lights? I want to see everybody. We got some wonderful looking people here this morning. Turn to somebody else, say, uh, I wonder what's going on there. Not, not such a great response for that. Not such a great response for that one. All right. Well, good morning. Uh, I'm Everett Arnett. For those of you who may not know me, I happen to be one of the pastors here. And uh, what a great privilege to be able to Stand in front of you this morning and share something that is going to be totally awesome. Can somebody say, awesome, dude? Awesome, dude. Uh, uh, well, all right. Nice try. Nice try. All right. Anyways, um, let me set my timer because, yeah, I, I believe in being punctual. There we go. Timer's gone. All right. Uh, so this morning, if you haven't already guessed it, I'm, I'm here to share about VBS. Anybody ever participated in a VBS in your life? I mean, like, e either you've been in a VBS as a kid uh, or you've helped out as an adult. Can I raise your hands one more time? Okay, wow, awesome. That's a lot of people. So I, then you, I'm speaking to the right crowd this morning, right? Is there anybody who has never been a part of a VBS, either as a kid or just never had an opportunity to help out at one? Raise your hand. Excellent. I am speaking to the right crowd again. All right. Um, unfortunately, now they feel guilty because there, there was very few hands. Don't feel guilty, seriously. I want you to enjoy uh, what I'm presenting today. It's going to be a quick, quick message because really what I want to share with you is not just about, hey guys, uh, I need help. Um, seriously, man, I, I just need a lot of help, okay? Um, I'm desperate here. Um, I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm, I've read all these books. I've got all this stuff I got to get. Oh, my goodness. I, I just don't know what to do. Can you please, please help me? <laughs> no, this is not that kind of service. Okay? I could get up here. I could really cry. I, I could really pour on the tears. You guys forget, I have a background in drama. I, I got a lot of different character voices, too. We can have a lot of great fun. That's my intention, is I want to have fun. Because I want you to understand that, that VBS is not just some little kids program that we put on. It's not just some little thing that we, yeah, okay, what's well, summertime? Oh, uh, let's see, what do we do? Summertime, summertime, hmm, we could go camping. Yeah, we do that every weekend. Hmm, oh, I know, let's do VBS. Yeah, oh, yes, we do need to do a VBS. But let's, let's get our mindset completely different. It's not about just a, an event. It's not about a week long, you know, putting your back uh, to, to, the, to the grindstone. And that's not the right phrase. But you get what I'm saying, right? It, it, it is hard work, but I've got to tell you, I've been a part of many VBSs, and not just because I've been a children's pastor for so many years, and it's required. It's not required. In fact, I look forward to these kind of events because I know the life change that occurs from every boy and girl that walks through these doors. 
and I, and I have to tell you, for a long time, I used to only concentrate on the boys and girls, on the kids. You know, I, I thought that's what kids' ministry was really all about. It's really about the kids. Parents, you're a nuisance. But the kids now, yes, that's what I live for. But I, I have learned over the years that my thinking was a little off. It was a little, it was a little skewed. I, I now understand that I need to think more orange. That it really is about the parents, first and foremost. That I'm not the big shot. The parents really are the big shots. They're the ones who deserve the round of applause. I'm just a silly, goofy guy who gets to stand up here in front of the kids. They only get to see me once a week. But they get to enjoy you day after day after day after day. And you know what? Grandparents, now that I'm a grandparent myself, I never realized what an awesome role that is. I completely love being a granddad. Man, do I love it. I, I can't even express how much I love it. But those of you who are granddads and grandmoms, you, you understand that feeling. Because guess what? They get to go home. When, they're, when they've act up all day and you're tired, you get to go to your bed. They get to go to their home. That's not the only reason why I like it. I'm goofing. I know. But I absolutely love being a granddad. I also enjoy being a pastor. It's a passion of mine. I've had it since I was a young teen. And, and I'm so glad that God saw fit to let that dream come true. And it's my privilege to stand here before you. So uh, without further ado, I want to start with a story. I want to start with a story uh, by a, a guy named Pete. Now, Pete, he lived in a home where they did not go to church. They, they had nothing to do with church. So Pete had no idea what church was all about. Now, there was a little church in Pete's neighborhood. And in this neighborhood, they were doing a summer program. And every day after the program was done, they would open up their gymnasium so the boys could come in and play basketball. Now, that may not attract many people. It doesn't attract me at all. I mean, I'll go in and cheer them on, but I'm not getting, you know, a basketball in my hand. I haven't played it in, in years. And as a pastor or a children's pastor or a youth pastor, again, that's just not one of my things. But I would make sure there was somebody on my staff who that was one of their things because that's what kids really want. And so the pastor opened up the doors and he says, we're just going to have free, free game. We're going to have, you know, free time for the boys to come on in. If the girls want to play too, they're welcome as well. So Pete and his friends decide to go. And each day, right after the summer program was done, they'd go hang out with the pastor. And you know what? The pastor was good at basketball too. And he was dunking. He, I mean, he just was crazy. Mad skills. Anyways, he was not only playing basketball, but goofing around with these guys, joking with them, having fun, you know, doing the, the kind of basketball teasing, you know, dribbling through the leg. You know, and I'm, I, if you're a basketball player, you understand. I'm not a basketball player, so i got to make that part up. I don't understand. However, one day the pastor, when the week was done, he said, hey, hey boys, tell you what, we have service every Sunday. Why don't you come and join us? Well, Pete did. And long story short, Pete uh, not only tried to never miss a Sunday service, but today, and this is a true story, Pete serves in that small church. He enjoys it, and to this day, when the summer events come up, he is the first guy who is yelling, hey, where do you need me? Just put me there, I'm there. So I share this story to, to help you understand and help us to all remember one simple truth. This church, Momentum Christian Church, we have a mission, folks. Our mission is to meet needs, mend hurts, and mold lives. Can you say that with me? Say, meet needs, mend hurts, and mold lives. So I have another question for you. I asked if you've served at a VBS, but I didn't ask you why. Let me, let me change gears for a moment. Has anyone ever served at a McRest? McRest. Okay, another good bunch of hands. Let me ask you, why would a church host McRest? What is the purpose for that? I need you to use your outside voices and shout real loud. Meeting needs, correct. 
Uh, what, what else? What is the, else is the reason why Macomb puts on this event? What, what are, besides meeting needs, give, give me some more specifics. What do they do for the people whose needs they're meeting? Giving them shelter. I heard something else over here. Feeding the homeless. In all actuality, McRest is one of those programs that takes people who are trying to make a better life for themselves. That's, that's the one key. Number one, they, when they join this program, they have to be willing to do better. They can't simply just show up. And I think that's wonderful because McRest doesn't simply just give a hand out. They're helping these folks get a hand up. And after all, isn't that the reason why we have volunteered for McRest? I'll tell you, I'll share the, the first time I ever uh, served at McRest, the church that, that Kim and I were attending. They did a McRest. I had never heard of McRest because we're from the Redford area. We moved out to this area, so I didn't know anything about a Macomb uh, Center for, for uh, homeless people. And so the first time Kim and I volunteered, it was, it was eye-opening, number one, to think that in the suburban area like Macomb that there were so many people that were in a bad situation. Just had no idea. You know, I, I live in Detroit. In Detroit, everybody was in a bad situation. And so we always looked at people who lived in the suburbs as they got it all together, they're rich, you know, they got everything they need, you know, and, and they're spoiled. Um, I didn't say that. Somebody else did. You heard them. They came from over that way, right? Um, I had no clue that people could be in the same boat that my wife and I were in. That my wife and I had lost our home and we had to move out this area. Uh, number one, because God called us out to this area. But number two, he provided a place for us to live that was a lot cheaper than where we were living. And so, yes, Lord, we're on our way. All right. God closed one door. He opened another door wide. Um, so I remember serving at McGrest. My job was to drive. So I, I chose the driving duty because I was a truck driver at the time. And so I drove a, the church van. I went to different uh, bus stops. I picked up a group of people, brought them back to the church, showed them where they needed to go, went and got my next group, and so on and so forth. That continued for about an hour. Then after that was done, I'd run inside the church, and my next duty was to help with registration. And so uh, this one was a little, little bit different. Um, I helped with, with a men's group, and so we had to actually pat down the guys. And I didn't understand what that was all about. I felt like, man, we were treating them like prisoners. Because in my heart, I'm like, we should be loving on these people. Little did I know, they were loving on these people by making sure they were following what they were supposed to do. Anyways, continuing on. My wife also was volunteering. She was helping with the registration. But then we also had, had an opportunity to serve a meal, too. And man, what, what a difference. You get to sit down for just a few minutes, and you're not allowed to pry into their uh, personal lives. You're not allowed to get personal information. And we're not allowed to share personal information ourselves. So... But the conversations were still very meaningful. We were allowed to pray if they accepted prayer. And so um, that's one of the things I, I loved. And my whole experience with McRess was not only a wow experience, but it was, man, Lord, you're awesome. Isn't he? And, and it was great because you got to see the difference in the lives of the men uh, as they were ending the week out. And, and our church at that time, that, that church, they really excelled at it. I mean, they went above and beyond. Every meal was done top notch. It wasn't like they went and heated up some burgers and said, here you go, guys. You know, it wasn't like they threw together PB&Js and here's your lunch for the day. They took care and, and they wrote little notes. I was like, I was really blown away by it. I did help out another time with McRest. This time it was with the ladies and their kids. And that was another whole different experience. But if you've helped out with the McGress, you understand how difficult it can be, but how rewarding it is at the end. Can, can anyone uh, testify to that? Amen. Amen. All right, so the reason why I want to ask you about that is why, then, is my next question. Why do you think a VBS program is so valuable? Let me hear some of your answers. Say that loud. Reaches out to the community. Great one. That is a great one. Anybody else? 
it gives, it gives kids something to do. Okay. And then parents might be like, yay. True story. It's a little sidebar. Um, Kim, <laughs> I, this is really funny to say, but Kim knows somebody through the homeschool group who has signed their kids up for six different VBSs already. I'm like, Mom, you're not getting the idea of VBS here. Uh, she's looking at it as an opportunity to get rid of her kids. Maybe the kids are a slow learner. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so uh, Jackie, you had your hand up. What's another good reason for VBS? Thank you. Yeah. She said, opens the door for Jesus to come into their lives. Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. He said, he said at an earlier age when they're actually more receptive. They're more teachable. Okay, one more. Yes, yes, come on. She said it shows the kids that church is not some big scary oh place where everyone stands in a straight line. No kid is allowed to talk. This was my experience as a kid. You wonder why I ran for church when I was a teenager? Man, as soon as I had my own authority, I'm out of there, bud. Right? So, yes, it gives the kids a different perspective of what God is really like. Because let's face it, folks, we people, we humans, we've kind of messed up church a little bit for kids. We kind of messed it up a little bit for adults, too. Let's, let's be real, right? So this is, this is a, a week where we get to kind of show them that God is a God who loves them, that we can have some fun. This timer's not working right. All right, David, you got me covered, right? All right. Um, and that, that not only is God real, but God loves them. I heard a comment over there. What was that? Share it. Share it. I, I heard it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So let's move on. What's the purpose? Folks, let's be honest. There is a community here that could really use a church like us. Are you ready to start reaching out to this community? This is a way to do it. It really is. See, they need... A church like us who's ready to reach out to them and share the love of Jesus Christ. We have a gift unlike any gift that this whole world could ever, ever produce. And that is we have a gift of love. We have a gift of peace. We have a gift of a Savior that a lot of them do not know. Or at least what they know about it has been skewed by media or been skewed by what's on television. You know, us Christians, we get, we get portrayed as, as wacky people on TV, don't we? And, and let's be honest, I, I was having a conversation with uh, some uh, young guys this week, and, and, and I, I made this statement during our lunch break. I'm like, you know, if I was not a Christian today, it would be hard for me to become one based on what I see in other people based on what I see in other Christians. And, and folks, I'm not pointing fingers because if I point fingers, I still got three of them pointing at me. I really do. Sometimes I don't even like the way I behave or sound or act. I'm like, you know what? I, I'm that Christian that my mother warned me about. So let's not be the Christian that our mother has warned us about. Right? Uh, there's a community waiting for us to take courage and step out and meet their needs. And a very simple way for us to do this is to invite their kids to a week-long program of fun. That's pretty easy, right? Is that difficult? But I need your help to do that. Here's the plea part. Uh, the, there's a community waiting out there for us. And when I say a community, I'm talking about just right across the street, folks. Really, that, that is my target right now, right across the street. And if we saturate that target, I've got one other target that we can go to, and that's at 26, if I'm pointing in the right direction, 26 and Jewel. OK? 
okay? There's a whole mobile community over there. But I, I think our first plan of attack needs to be right across the street. We need to saturate them. If you know people that live over there, if there's a way for us to contact the manager of that facility, if, there, if, if there's anybody in this room right now who knows anybody over there that we can contact to find out if we can pass out flyers, folks, I, I just need you to help me out. That's it. It's an easy way for us to do it. Uh, there's a community that we can show compassion to and mend their hurts. And the simple way for us to do that is just by having fun all week long with their kids and by showing the compassion and the love of Jesus Christ. But not only to their kids, but to their parents. When, those, when the parents bring their kids in here, you know what I'm praying for? I'm praying that not a whole bunch of churched kids come to our event. I'm praying that a whole bunch of unchurched people come and visit our church. I would rather see 10 more unchurched families come and join us for a VBS program than I would attracting every other church's kids to our program. Now, I want our kids to be a part of this because it's going to be amazing. It's going to be fun. And I'm asking all of our kids to invite all of their friends. So please don't hear me say, oh, Pastor Everett doesn't care about our kids. All he cares about is what's out there. No, I'm not saying that at all. And for some of you who have that little voice, I'm sorry. I wasn't making fun of you. Um, <laughs> there is a community, folks, that's looking for us to help with their needs and to mend their hurts. And, and lastly, there's a community that's longing for us to come alongside them. Come alongside them and show them the way. If they're churched and they're disillusioned by church and they've stepped away from church, then it's up to us to show them that the church still represents God today. That we are a compassionate bunch. That we do care for you. We do love you. And we are sorry for what you experienced in the past. But please, come and check us out this week. They're longing for us, folks, to come side by side with them and help them to live their lives for Jesus. That's what molding is all about. Discipleship. It happens side by side. This is not discipleship. This is, this is teaching. This is preaching. But discipleship, true discipleship, side by side, small groups, little bit by a little bit. And we have an opportunity to do that. All right, so it, it doesn't have to be hard, and I want you to watch this quick little video on how this actually happens throughout the week. So let's watch this video. <laughs> gearing up for an incredible week at VBS. Before you dig into those leader manuals and go-to guides, take a quick look at how Maker Fun Factory works. Each part of this program is intentionally designed to maximize every minute kids are with you. It may be different from the way you've traditionally done VBS. First, instead of age-graded classes, you'll create mixed-aged crews of up to five elementary-age kids and one teenaged or adult crew leader. At Group, we've been doing this for more than 20 years, and it works. You'll also make crews of preschoolers with their own teenaged or adult crew leader. Preschool crews are made up of kids between the ages of three and five, kids who haven't yet been to kindergarten. Everyone gets together for worship at Soundwave Sing and Play. After 25 minutes of music, skits, and even video, preschoolers head off to Tinker Tots Preschool for age-appropriate fun that's designed just for them. Elementary crews divide into four groups according to the daily schedule that looks something like this. That way, everyone knows exactly what to do, where to go, and when to be there. You can find customizable daily schedules on the Clip Art and Resources CD or in the Ultimate Director Go-To Guide. Following the daily schedule, crews rotate every 20 minutes to one of four stations. Each day, a different group will head to Snack Factory instead of games. Here, they'll create snacks for the entire VBS. 
After two rotations, everyone, preschoolers and elementary kids, come together to eat snacks at the snack factory. Then preschoolers head back to Tinker Tots Preschool, and elementary kids have two more rotations through their stations. Finally, all elementary crews come together for a 25-minute wrap-up at Fun Shop Finale. Preschoolers have their own age-appropriate closing at Tinker Tots Preschool. That makes it easier to get the little guys handed off safely to their parents or caregivers at the end of the day. You'll love this simple, flexible, and innovative way of letting kids explore, learn, and grow. You're in for an amazing week of deeper relationships between kids and leaders, kids and kids, and most importantly, between kids and Jesus. All right, so there you have it. It's not difficult. It's not going to be hard. We're going to provide the training for everybody who uh, decides to serve with us for that week. And uh, I just want to, I want to make this note too. There is nobody in this room who cannot help. It doesn't matter uh, your age, what your job is. There, there is something you can plug into. On those back tables, there are three different tables. The, the middle table is a table set up for just all the preschool different jobs that we have available. On the table that's closest to the exit doors, that's a table that is set up for all the elementary positions. And the table closest to the sound booth, that's for the people who don't really want to have to interact with all the kids. I'm like, yeah, I want to help, but do I have to? Do I have to be there with all the kids? Yeah, okay, no, you don't have to. But we have plenty of other jobs that you can help out as well. Uh, folks, I'm telling you, everybody who wants to can get involved. So there, there's no excuse. If you want to help, you can help. And, and I just want to encourage you to please help. Uh, and, and again, I'm not up here to beg for you to, everybody to get involved. Would I love to see more hands? Absolutely. But I'm looking for those of you who really want to be a part of this. And if I haven't convinced you to be a part of this, uh, another hour of me standing up here talking is not going to help either. So if I have not already convinced you, I'm sorry, I didn't do a good enough job. But if I have convinced you, I thank you from the bottom of my heart to help us and participate. If one of those jobs back there don't appeal to you, don't worry. We'll find something else for you to do. Okay? Because uh, we need decorators. We need guys uh, and gals who are willing to do some building stuff. We need guys and gals or whoever to work the sound booth all week long. We need people all over the place. We need greeters. You don't even have to interact with the kids a whole lot, but you can be a smiling face. And we need people to work the registration table. These are all uh, those kind of jobs I'm talking about where you don't have to be running around with kids all day long. But for those of you who don't mind running around with kids, we got lots of other jobs there as well. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Uh, that, that gets to my point of how do you get involved? There's three ways. Number one, there's those tables I just mentioned. Number two, there are these cards that are scattered all over. If there's not one by your seat, there's a bunch up here in the uh, pews that nobody was sitting in or the chairs. So make sure you grab one of these because it gives you the hours, the days. It gives you a website that you can... Uh, Go to, so you can do this online. You don't even have to spend time at those back tables. Or you can even simply just go to our homepage, and on the homepage you'll see the, this nice little logo here. You can click on that logo, and it'll take you right to the sign-in page. That's it, folks. Three ways. Either back there, use one of these cards. It has the, the link right up at the top on front and back. It also gives you the times and dates. The, the uh, website will also give you the times and dates. Okay? Folks, I want to say one last thing. Was that the five? Thank you. I want to say one last thing. I want you to understand this is not just important to me, but all the pastors of this church and all the elders of this church believe this to be one of the greatest events that we will do this year. They have all, not only, they, not, not only do they believe it's so important that they asked me to come here and share this with you today, but they're, they're, they have all agreed that we're shutting down the whole church for a whole week. We're not going to do Wednesday service, and guess what? We're taking over Sunday service that week. It'll be kids' music. It'll be kids' fun. I guarantee you it will be a blast for anybody who shows up, whether you're a regular or a visitor who just happens to be showing up on that day. 
It'll be an unusual service, but it'll be lots of fun. We'll have VIP seating for you guys, but the kids, they'll get their front row seating like they were doing all week long. Now, I, I can't take any more questions because I really do need to wrap this up. We've got two more things we need to accomplish. Uh, David will be in the back to answer any questions because I have to go to an event right after today. But can I pray with you? And then I'm going to ask Brother Jeff to come on up here. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day that is on its way. I see the sunshine already peeking through the window. Lord, we're so blessed that we have a building as beautiful as this, that we have hands who help to build this building and decorate this building. Now, Father, help us to share this building with our community. Father, I'm praying for boldness in everybody here who has the unction or feels the Spirit tugging them to go and share this. Father, I'm praying that, that uh, you will build up their faith as they share this event with other people. Lord, I'm praying for the right people to show up and participate. But also, I'm believing for the right people to put their hands to the plow and help with the work. Father, we want your kingdom to be glorified in all of this. this is, we don't do this for us. We do this for you. And Father, we want to praise you, and we want to see lives changed. We want to see children come to know you. And through those children, we want to see parents come to know you in a real way, Father. Lord, we're, we're just, we're so excited. I, I know I'm excited. I'm busting at the seams here. Father, help me. Help me to do this and help our team to do the very best we can for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.